can identify it properly. Okay, so I, I got some examples of some, some kind of frivolous and also not frivolous research studies that I want to kind of play through with you guys. And I want to see if you guys, ah, uh, that's a black font again, I'm sorry. Yeah, hopefully you guys can read this okay. Let me, is this too dark? Can we do this? Is that okay? The decent? Okay. So, suppose the experiment you are doing, I'm going to start simple and work our way up to more interesting stuff. This is something we did in class. When I had you guys roll the die and keep track of the results, and you were interested in how many pips you got, was that binomial? Rolling a single die one time, just rolling the die and counting how many pips you got. Is that binomial? Does it satisfy a binomial? We got a, we got a, no, we got a shaking head no back there. What do you think? Binomial or not? A vote for no, a saying no, we got to vote for no. All in favor of no? All opposed? Discussion? Oh, yeah, discussion. Tell me why it's not. Because it's hexnomial. There are six outcomes. There's six outcomes when you roll a die, right? One, two, three, four, five, or six. So it's not binomial, it's multinomial. We'll deal with that in 244, those of you taking that, taking that journey with you. Good. What if you play a game with a friend where you say, all right, I'm going to throw a die. If I get a three, you pay me five bucks. If I don't get a three, you know, I pay you something. I'll have you analyze that later in the quiz. Is that binomial? Yes. Yes. yes because you either get a three or you don't. Or you don't get a three, right? That makes it binomial. There, there, there isn't a different pay uh, payout for each of the different numbers that you get. It's either you get a three or you don't get a three. Same die, but two different experiments with the same die. Is that fair? It's like saying, did you get a boy, a boy chicken or a girl chicken versus how heavy a chicken did you get, right? One, yes or no, and a whole, then you have a whole sliding scale. So different, different, different definitions of the variables. All right, let's keep it going. I think I got dice here again. Yes. We also did this one in class. Throw two dice and keep track of the sum on the pips. Binomial? No. No? How come? Too many outcomes, right? Too many outcomes. Two through, uh, two through 12. Two through 12. Too many outcomes. All right. Let's change it up a little bit. Betting on 7 or 11? You can actually say yes or no to this one, couldn't you? So, some of you said no. Tell me why you said no. Because technically you're correct. Because there's three outcomes, right? You either hit 7, get 11, or neither 7 nor 11. Is that, is that fair? Those of you that said yes, how come? 7, 11, R1. Because you can view this as binomial by looping 7 or 11 together under one probability, right? And then not getting 7 or 11. So either way, you could make the distribution work either way. If you want to make it binomial, I like making things binomial if I can, because it makes the math easy. You can make it trinomial, Rob. Absolutely. 7, 11, neither 7 nor 11. Think of it as the in-class quiz you guys did last week with my, my life insurance. You either die, become disabled, but don't die, neither die nor become disabled. There's a trinomial. You can make that as stay healthy versus not stay healthy. Make it binomial if you want to. I mean, you could do that and figure it out if you, if you could collapse them down. So this one goes either way. Absolutely. Absolutely. How about doing it five times? Doing it five times. Does that, does that change the binomiality or the non-binomiality of it? No. no, because as long as you say do it a fixed number of times, whether it's once or five times, it's still binomial. As long as you set a limit. None of this, I want to keep playing until I want my money back. For, for two reasons. Number one, that's not binomial. Number two, you're going to lose all your money. You just proved that over here, right? Right. So as long as it's a fixed number of trials, if I tell people, when you go to Vegas, put the money in your right pocket, you don't want, you don't mind losing. Play till it's gone. Fixed number of trials, essentially, or a fixed number of money. So fixed amount of money. Fair? All right. Let's get away from dice. Let's get away from dice. Let's get into some more interesting stuff, like actually like sociological. Ah, chuck a look. Forget chuck a look. Here we go. I heard. They've been proven to me that 7% of men, about 7% of American men, have red green color blindness. My boss does. So it's very interesting. I'm going to select 20 American men at random and check to see how many of them have such color blindness. Have such color blindness. Would that be binomial? Yes. Tell me why. Because you're such 
<laughs> yes or no, they do or they don't. You either do or you don't have it. That makes it binomial. Good. There's one other smaller part that makes it binomial too. And you, can you see what it is? Fixed number of drop. I went out to get 20 of them. 20 of them, yes? There are 20 in my sample. So you have to fix that number to make it binomial too. Now, see how that see how that differs from here. Why is that one? I don't get this. It keeps changing the anyway. Read this again. Why does the 20 make it um It's not that it's 20. It's that I said I'm going to go check 20. Why does that make, why does that fixed number make it binomial? Because otherwise it's geometric, like your game was wrong. See, check this out. Watch this right here. Read this, see how it's different than the previous one. Other than the fact that it's in white print versus black print. I don't think I can't explain that. You see the difference? You keep selecting men at random until you get to 20. This is like, Max, here's a box. Keep getting birds until the box is full. I've seen them at the Lego store, where they let you take a box and put as many Legos in until you can't close the top anymore, and it terrifies me to think about what he would do with baby birds in that same situation. So the problem is, the probabilities aren't analyzed in the same way. I'm not saying this isn't valid. I'm saying it's not binomial. It's a different experiment. It's a different experiment if you do this. You can't run the binomial distribution on this. Because technically speaking, Technically speaking, there's no top end on this. Number of people you have to sample, it could be thousands or tens of thousands. That's what makes it different. That's what makes it different. Fair enough? Good. Again, white print, I can't explain this. Here we go. Well, it's impossible today, yes, but more exactly. What do you think? Binomial or not? Yes. 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 This one's a no. Figure out why. Oh, it's so important to understand why this one's a no. It match, it, it's, it's yes or no. It's yes or no, correct? We either have it or we don't. It's a fixed number of trials, because I'm saying I'm grabbing 10. But what's the part, and it's, it's, a, mild, it's a mild difference. But what's, what part are we breaking about the binomial here? It, I, well, that's actually broken by the definition of the, I don't know if guys in the room. I'd have to pick whoever I have. Remember the Say that again. Is it because you're comparing the class to the... To the population? Yeah. If I, if I want to see if it's the same, that's okay to do. But going along with that, remember the math cheat we did a little bit? by assuming that they were independent trials when they really really, really weren't with the chickens. Because when you assume they're independent, you assume Max goes in, grabs a bird, checks the sex, and then puts it back in the bin, and then shovels them and pulls again. But that's not what really is happening, right? He's really grabbing it, pulling it out, looking at it. Well, actually, he's putting it in a box and I bring it home, and then we keep our fingers crossed that they're, bird, that they're girls. But why did we say it's okay to pretend they're independent when they really weren't? Because they're close enough, exactly, and they're close enough because the population is really big and our sample is, we broke that here. There's a huge chunk of dudes in this room compared to the overall population. Right, right now, there are, I, I counted, if I counted correctly, there are nine guys in the room. Nine guys in the room, right? If I remove one guy, it's nine out of a roughly 25 today. Well, that's a huge chunk, isn't it? 9 out of 25 is almost a third of the room. If I start pulling guys out of the room, it's not, it's not meaningfully the same anymore because I'm removing too large a chunk of the population with each draw. When I had American men, did you catch that? You might not have caught that. If I randomly select American men, 20 American men, am I changing? The, no, because I'm pulling 20 out of like 150 million. That's a teeny tiny percentage. If I'm removing the nine dudes out of this class, that's like 3% of the class with each pull. That, you can't pretend that that's zero. You, you have to pretend that it's three, which means you can't use the binomial on this. I will never, ever voice that on you guys on an assessment. I just want you to be aware of it when you go out into your, into your research jobs and realize not everything is binomial. That's actually called hypergeometric. It's freaking rad. It's <laughs> awesome. It's a great distribution. It explains keto. It explains Powerball. It explains a lot of things. 
explains a lot of things. Defect rates in machine parts, great stuff. It does not explain binomials, though, unfortunately. So just be careful. When you have small samples, when you're drawing small samples from very specific populations, you've got to be careful about using the binomial distribution. Sometimes it doesn't fit. More on that in 244 later math classes. Just wanted to put that, put that in your mind. So is that the constant Right, because they wouldn't be constant and complementary. Well, they'd be complementary, but they wouldn't be constant. They'd keep changing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so just a heads up. Just a heads up. If you want a quiz on the hypergeometric, let me know. I'll make one for you. You already did one on the geometric. That's the gambler's ruin. Looks like it wasn't very popular. That's okay. <laughs> I'm guessing you won't want the hypergeometric. That's okay, too. So now, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this with you to think about until next class. And we'll analyze it next class to wrap up. So, 2010, three, four years ago, four years ago, oh my god, three and a half years ago, holy shit, that was time. His hair has really changed. His hair has totally changed, yes. I mean, compared to what he is now, he's this big mop of hair. What? Mop of hair. He's gotten barber as he's gotten older. So this was the summer. Max would have been going, he was two and a half. Two and a half. So well into walking, well into exploring, well into doing things like eating stuff he shouldn't. Like dirt and rocks and other stuff. Uh, exploring and challenging because he's independent enough to walk but not sensible enough not to like go ahead first into the pot without me around. So we kept an eye on him pretty carefully and I, I noticed that summer as I was walking around, he also learned how to put Crocs on that summer. <laughs> and as I noticed, as I noticed, and I, I, the, the trick with this one was I wanted to be a scientist about this. So uh, some of you are laughing, I'm guessing because you've seen kids wear their Crocs like this. Maybe, maybe. So I was trying to be a scientist this summer. So what I did was, every once in a while, when he put his Crocs on, I would get the camera out and take a quick snap picture. Here he thought I was taking a picture of his face, he didn't realize I was taking a picture of his entire body. Didn't know I was taking a picture of him there, pretty sure he knew I was taking a picture of him there. But I, wasn't, I wouldn't do it every day. I'm kind of a photo freak. I love taking pictures of him because I like watching him grow. If you've been in my office, I've got a picture of him every six months in a white t-shirt next to the door. You can see him growing. It's fun. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to bias him. I like, go, oh, Dad's taking a picture again. So I tried to be random about when I took the pictures. But I did do it ten times. I told myself. I told myself through that summer, I'm going to take 10 pictures of them at roughly random times selected throughout the summer. I used technology to help me generate 10 random numbers, and I took pictures on that day. He always wore Crocs every day, which was great. And I watched him put the Crocs on his feet. Because what I started noticing in early June was the Crocs were often on the backwards feet, or the duck feet. So what I wanted to know was, is that the way he thinks they should be on his feet? Or is he just randomly putting his shoes on and they end up being on backwards a bunch? You see what I'm, see what I'm getting at? Yeah. Like, like we know left and right shoes. And again, being a first time parent, I don't, what do what kids learn the left shoe versus the right shoe? Like, what, what does that happen? Is it two and a half? I'm 40 and I still do it. So I, my question is the average child, not that like, anything that I produce is average, but the, the, I mean, the poor kid is he's cursed from the start. Everything's analytic, analytic everything. So is this indicative of him guessing or is it indicative of him thinking that's right? So let me just, before, I want to leave you, we'll get out a little bit early today. I want you to think about this for Tuesday. I watched it 10 times. I told myself, as soon as I saw the first couple of times, I'm going to watch it 10 times and exactly 10 times. And I want to see if he's guessing or not. So I'm going to assume that he's guessing. So I'm assuming he's guessing, I'm going to watch him exactly 10 times. Is that binomial? Yes. Absolutely. Tell me why. Convince me it's binomial before you walk out of here. I told myself I was going to watch him 10 times. I'm not going to keep watching him until something happens. I'm going to watch him 10 times. He either puts him on correctly or he puts him on incorrectly. Assuming that he gets the first shoe right, the second shoe has to be right under two feet. Okay. And vice versa. Good. Two outcomes. Are they constant complementary probabilities? Yes. What are those probabilities? Assuming he's guessing. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5. He's flipping a coin in his mind, right? If he's guessing, right? Now this is the if. If he's guessing, he's flipping a coin in his mind to decide which shoe goes on the left foot. Now I've seen this kid get dressed. I can attribute quite a bit of it to randomness. The way he puts his pajamas on at night, he knocks his pants around his head. I mean, he runs in his room, Daddy! I'm like, dude, that's, that's my boxers on your head. Oh, you've got bandits on your head. So, yeah, so I want to see if he's guessing or not. So it is, it's going to be binomial if we do that. Next time, we can't do it justice in five minutes. 
We'll, we'll start on Tuesday next time and we'll see if he's guessing because there's a, one more piece of data I want to share with you and we'll come back to that because you have some really experiment. Okay? Have a good weekend. Long three day weekend. Remember, no class on Monday. No class on Monday. I mean, don't come here anyway because we're having on Monday, but don't, like your Monday classes don't be don't either. Come any don't come to any classes on Monday. Relax and have a good day. No, don't turn it in. Don't turn it in because you don't have to turn it. Well, first of all, you just do two hours a week. So don't turn it in now because I can give you the answer, but you can learn from it. Take it and think about it. Oh, you can do that for sure. I just. I, that's totally fine. You can, you can turn it in right now. But remember, too, if it's not a perfect 10, don't turn it in either. I'll only want you to put the pieces in that are contributing to your average you know, minimum. Oh, I see what you're saying. So this is actually going to pull you up. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Yes, do it. And then I'll have a solution video for you. You can check it out, okay? Good. Right, good, good point, Michaela. Good mathematical use. Okay. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's get you. And what do you, well, what do you guys mind just turning the, just closing the camera, the little window there? I think we